Hello, uh, my name is Andrew Otto, and I'm here to present to you the key findings and recommendations of the project on the development of guidelines and specifications for low volume sealed roads through back analysis, also known as uh, the back analysis project. The contents of my presentation today are as follows. A look at the background to the study and the study methodology, key findings, key recommendations and further research topics. Before I commence my presentation today, I would like to make a few acknowledgements and the first acknowledgement goes to UK Aid for providing the funding for the project through the RECAP program. The second acknowledgement goes to the participating countries for phase three of the project. These are Ghana, Mozambique, Uganda and Zambia for contributing to and participating in the fieldwork, laboratory activities and data analysis. Finally, I would like to thank Tanzania for hosting the final project workshop for all the participating countries. Uh, through the presentation, I'll uh, frequently refer to the study or to the project, and I want you to note that these are the same thing. Now, going to the background of the study, um, there are several challenges which are faced by many countries in the provision of low volume roads. Uh, some of these challenges are large proportions of road network in sub-Saharan Africa are made of gravel and earth materials which are difficult to maintain and difficult to provide uh, passability and generate a lot of dust and accidents are frequent on some of these roads. The second challenge is the increasingly dwindling road material sources amidst increasingly restrictive land and environmental laws. We also have another key challenge of market forces which are increasingly driving up uh, construction costs. And as expected, many of these countries have got significant maintenance backlog. Hence, it is necessary to widen the range of materials that are available for road provision using evidence-based approaches. Now, there are several projects which were initiated under the RECAP program to address the challenges. One of these projects was the development of guidelines and specifications for low volume sealed roads through back analysis, which is what I am presenting on at the moment. Uh, this project was initiated with the following key objectives. The first being to review the performance of existing low volume sealed roads. The second objective was to improve guidelines and specifications for pavement design and construction. And the third was to build capacity of counterparts in the recap countries. And lastly, to disseminate the findings and recommendations of the study to enhance their uptake and embedment. Um, the study was divided into three phases. The first phase was the creation of a database and addition of initial data and information into the database. This database contains uh, performance data for various low volume roads and it can be accessed through the website shown here. The second phase of the study involved training of counterparts in the various countries on the use of the database refining the database structure and addition of more data. Also, 
identification of gaps for further studies to refine specifications and design catalogs formed a key part of the second phase. And some of the gaps identified were the shortage of studies on the performance of low volume sealed roads, which had been in existence for more than 10 years in areas of high rainfall. The second key gap identified was the shortage of studies that analyzed the performance of low volume sealed roads that had carried at least more than 0 0.5 MESA, the MESA being million equivalent standard axles of traffic. The last key gap identified was that there were very few studies that had focused on the performance of low volume sealed roads, which have weak subgrades. Now, the third phase of the study was the field investigation phase and the laboratory phase and data analysis and revision of uh, material specifications and pavement design catalogs. And lastly, the dissemination of findings. Now, the study methodology for phase three was as follows. Several of the gaps identified were filled by identifying test sections in the four participating countries. In total, 26 test sections were assessed in these four countries. Now, the assessment involved fieldwork, laboratory investigations, and a combined analysis of all of this data together with data previously uh, held in the database from previous studies. Now, as a result of the analysis, um, material specifications were revised as well as the pavement design catalogs. A sample of the analysis is shown here, which is a graph that represents the mean rut depth of the sections that were used to refine uh, the specifications and the design catalogs. Now, pavement structural performance is often assessed in terms of one key criteria, and that being the rat depth. Many countries have specifications that state that a mean rat depth or a 90th percentile rat depth of 20 millimeters signifies the terminal failure of the pavement structure. For low volume roads, we feel that the 20 millimeter is a bit too stringent and the actual terminal condition is best represented by 30 millimeters of rad depth. Now, this graph shows that all the sections studied had a mean rad depth of well below 30 millimeters or even 20 millimeters. This includes even sections that had visually performed poorly, indicated in by the red line on the graph here, and the sections that had visually performed well, indicated by the green line. Now, using these uh, sections, several specifications were revised. For example, the specification of particle size distribution shown here. The red line indicates what is the existing specification in many countries and manuals. And the blue lines indicate 
the range of materials, fine grain materials that had performed well. And you can see that the envelope of these fine grain materials lies actually way outside what the specification limits currently say. So this provides for an opportunity to revise the specifications to make these materials available for use in provision of low volume sealed roads. Here is a, a picture or photograph that shows the fine grained materials in the pavement, in the base course and in the sub base. And in this case, they consisted of neat untreated laterite and also of a sand material, as can be seen by the photograph on the right. Um, another interesting finding was the performance of pavements that uh, were made up of very coarse materials. The coarseness allowed for the classification to be in the range of cobbles and boulders. And you can see here on the left, one of the boulders taken out of a sub-base layer, and on the right, um, cobbles uh, that were taken out of a base course. Basically, you can see that the sub-base material fits better uh, as a Telford material and the base material fits better as a macadam type of material. Now, these roads have been subjected to severe overloading and when we carried out uh, field surveys, we found axles of up to 21 tons that uh, were used in these roads. And yet the rut depth was well below 12 millimeters. So this is indeed a very good material and it's important that in areas where uh, rocks are in abundance, such as in Ethiopia, use is made of this construction type and also that better methods of specifying them uh, are developed. At the moment, we have developed particle size distributions to specify these materials. Again, the Telford type lends itself very well for labor-based type of construction, as well as the macadam, uh, as well also as suitable for labor-based type of construction, but macadam can also be uh, mechanized. Um, another key finding was that many, many of the sections studied, uh, the failures started by initiation of defects on the surfacing or of the drainage. But we did come across uh, some sections with very thin bituminous surfacings, as shown in this photograph, and the surfacings had amalgamated or integrated with the base material as shown in the photograph on the left and on the photograph on the right you can see that the surfacing is about only 10 to 15 millimeters thick and yet they had been subjected to severe uh, heavy axles up to 21 tons that withstood these axles for more than 20 years and that totaled up to 1.6 million equivalent on standard axles carried. Now, um, we also, as I mentioned earlier, found that a lot of the defects or the performance of the pavements were governed by uh, defects induced by the surf surfacing or failures that originated from the surfacing. Um, you can see from this table here that the section one had a very high crack index and section two had no cracking at all. 
and the sections both have the same surface thickness, but the rad depth of the second section is marginally higher than that of the first section. Now, when you look at the second table, you realize that the moisture content in the first section is higher than the moisture content in the second section. And correspondingly, the strength, the in situ strength of the first section, at least for the base course, is almost a half of the strength of the base course of the second section. And this is because rainfall has been ingressing through the cracks in the first section and continuing to weaken the base course. Now, over repeated cycles of rainfall events, this will lead to deterioration of the pavement permanently. So it is indeed a typical indication of how pavement failure can be induced. We also found uh, a few odd things. For example, crown height is often recommended to be at least 0 0.75 meters high. But as you see from this photograph, here is a good performing section with a very low crown height. The crown height was actually 0 0.4 meters. And the section had performed well for more than 29 years in a region of high rainfall, rainfall of about 1,200 millimeters per year, and carried over 3 million equivalent standard axles and yet it is made up of a very poor gravel that was uh, modified by cement but still retained high plasticity of about uh, pi of about 13 millimeters and yet this performed well so these are some of the odds uh, another finding was that the pavement balance didn't seem to pay play a key role in, in the performance of these sections. Uh, you can see here that the balance curve on the left is for a section that has performed poorly, and yet this section is well balanced. And on the right, the balance curve is for a section that has performed very well, and you can see this is classified as a poorly balanced deep structure. So the pavement balance concept didn't seem to uh, affect performance at all. Now, with all these findings, we came up with recommendations. And one of the key recommendations is a revision of the design catalogs. Now, two catalogs have been revised. One for roads where heavy vehicle axles are predominantly less than eight tons, and the other for roads where the axles are predominantly greater than eight tons. Now, in the pavement design catalogs, we have revised the use of G80 material, that's material which has a soft CBR of 80%, and we now use mostly G60 material, material that has a soft CBR of about 60%. Now, this will help to widen the availability of materials that can be used for the provision of low volume roads. And the G80 material is now used in the catalog for uh, roads that are designed to carry heavy axles that are mostly greater than um, eight tons. Um, a key characteristic of materials that's, that has inhibited um, the materials that can be used for provision of low volume roads is the plasticity characteristic of material. Now, by analysis of the plasticity indices, 
of sections that had performed well, we found that these limits could be extended. Now in brackets here are current limits and the figures next to them are the revised limits that we have been able to develop through analysis of the data. And you can see that significant uh, reduction in requirements have been uh, made here so that materials are more uh, or rather a wide range of materials can be used for provision of low volume sealed roads. Um, another key characteristic is the particle size distribution. And you can see here that we have widened the envelope of materials that can be used. The green line and the purple line show the existing limits in the red line and the blue line show the new revised limits. So the envelope has been widened. Now this envelope is for materials used for both the base and sub bases. So we have combined the envelopes that were previously separate for the base and sub base into one envelope that works for both the base and sub base for traffic greater than 0.3 mesa. Now this was not based on guesswork but all of the data analyzed showed that uh, materials that fitted in this envelope performed well either as a base or sub base material. Now for traffic less than 0.3 mesa, design traffic less than 0.3 mesa, we are only specifying a grading modulus and not the envelope. And the grading modulus of between 1.2 2.65 has been found to be satisfactory and are the new recommended limits. Now, of course, it is important to ask whether any of the new recommendations are actually uh, cost beneficial to any of the implementing agencies. So, we have done a cost-benefit analysis or comparison between designs that would be made using the old catalogs and designs made using the new catalog or new recommendations. And from this table, you can see that the new catalog, which is on the right-hand side, requires lower initial investment costs than the old catalog. That is on by shown by the discounted agency costs. You see that they are lower for the new catalog as compared to that for the old catalog. The second uh, key point is that the new catalog offers better value for money than the old catalogs. And that is shown by the net present value, which you can see for the new catalog are higher than for the old catalog. Also, you can see that the ceiling of shoulders provides for lower investment cost requirements and as well, it provides for higher net present values or net uh, higher value for money for the investment in the later stages of the life of the road. And in overall, you find that the cost benefit of using the new catalogs over the old catalogs is in the range of about 25 to 40%. Uh, of course, this will vary depending on specific circumstances but this is an indication of the savings that can be realized. Now, to remind ourselves of the key recommendations, here are four that are put together. One is the adoption of the revised pavement design catalogs that allow for less stringent structural requirements 
and design traffic of up to 3 million equivalent standard axles. The second key recommendation is a focus on provision and and timely maintenance of good drainage and surfacings. If this is done, the life of any low volume sealed road will significantly be enhanced. Now, we also recommend that uh, agencies consider the use of primer seals before application of double surface treatments. This is based on experience in Ghana where these have performed very well. Uh, the third recommendation is that the boundaries of plasticity characteristics and grading envelopes for particle size distribution have been significantly widened. The fourth key recommendation is the use of CBR60 material as a replacement for CBR80 material in the base layer and CBR25 material as a replacement for CBR30 material in the sub-base layer should be adopted. Other recommendations can be found in the final report of the project that you can access from the RECAP website. Now, of course, every study or research has to show the path for subsequent research that builds on the progress that has been made. And we have identified three key research topics that uh, should be carried out to enhance the current findings. The first is a research on the effect of the current changes in bitumen quality on the performance of low volume sealed roads. And the second research topic is a detailed study involving the review of the performance of concrete sections used on low volume roads with a view to estimating the maintenance requirements and costs of, of concrete used on low volume roads. The third is the damage on low volume sealed roads caused by excessively heavy axles and the threshold limits of those axles. Thank you for your attention. Please take note of the RECAP website where you can access more material related to the project. Thank you.